Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are going to try to be as productive as possible while my baby naps, and as he goes back down for the evening, we're gonna wrap some things up. So while my baby sleeps, I figure it's just the best time to try to clean things up while my husband and daughter are outside so that I can really just kind of get things tidy before, you know, we mess it all up again at dinner time. So I was gonna stop cleaning at the countertops, but I looked at our stove and I was just like, oh my gosh, there's so many crumbs. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this up before moving on to washing the pumpkin that we actually grew in our backyard last summer.
So in a previous video, I did share us like the process of me harvesting this pumpkin. I was so excited and I'm still so excited that we were able to grow this in our own backyard. So you'll see the little dialogue between me and Aubrey as I cut this up. She was super excited and we're just, I'm teaching her to be thankful for the things that feed us. Thank you pumpkin for feeding us. We will never forget you. Mommy, will you feed Bumble it for one, one time? I will okay. always remember this pumpkin. I'm so sad that we are cutting off this. No, because it's going to be really awesome. Let me see okay, the well, hold inside. On. Can I see the inside? Yep. It'll feel slimy, but it'll be really cool. So I'm excited that we're gonna have some more seeds to plant and hopefully we'll have an even bigger harvest this upcoming fall. I'm hoping that we can have like a little pumpkin patch actually for our families to come and like pick from and just have a fun little, you know, Halloween time activity for our families. But I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the larger half that I cut. We will be baking this later this evening and I will be packaging it up to make some pumpkin bread for a future video, so stay tuned for that. But with the remaining seeds, I did set some aside for us to replant, but there's no way that we need this many seeds. So I am just chopping everything up, and we will be giving these to our chickens. From what I understand, serving the chickens pumpkin is actually good and like to prevent getting worms in their stomach, and that's something that we definitely don't want them to have. So anyways, I you know, really wanted to save some of this pumpkin for them. I did at first, you'll see, try to feed them just like a whole chunk of the pumpkin and they kind of pecked at it, but they weren't really interested. And after filming this video, I went ahead and just chopped up all of the pumpkin super fine and they devoured it. So I did save some in Ziploc bags in the freezer and I'm planning on giving them the frozen pumpkin bits sometime when it gets a little bit warmer so that it cools them off and they can have it a little bit later on as well. But after chopping up the pumpkin, I went ahead and tried to clean out their coop just a little bit. I didn't do like a full on deep clean, but I didn't do just like an easy toss of extra pine in their coop. So what I did was I scooped out from their original chicken run, scooped out all of the stuff that was like on the ground there and moved it to our larger chicken run now. And then what I did was I pushed a lot of the pine and chicken poo like out from the coop and into the original chicken run so that I could then put some fresh pine in the nesting box. I like completely put new pine in the nesting box and then threw on some extra pine in our chicken coop. This isn't something that I plan on doing like every week or anything like that. If anything, it'll just be a few times a year and it was, you know, a pleasant day out. So I figured it would be a good time to get that done. Then I moved on to sweeping our little sidewalk. Since we let our chickens free range in our backyard, they tend to kick a lot of our mulch onto the little like sidewalk area. So I went ahead and sweep that up even though they're going to make a mess soon after and filled up their water as they were in need of it. And since we're outside, I want to show you guys our grass that's growing in. You have to look really closely, but there are blades of grass 
And Juan also built this cool little clubhouse for Aubrey. It's kind of up on the hill. He built the platform. We used some cement that I had to like really secure it. And then he, you know, very nicely secured this plastic house. You can see I, I'm gonna tug on it and it's not moving. So everything is like nice and snug and secure to the base. And it's just the coolest little house on the hill. I think I'm gonna call it the Lima Bean Clubhouse. And, you know, I'm just so excited that Aubrey gets to have a little home up there and Jack will soon play with her as well. So we're gonna finish up being outside by checking the chicken coop and we can see that we got another egg. So I'm super excited. You can see our beautiful selection of colors from our four hens. And we are, we've actually been getting close to four a day. So I'm really excited about that because for a while it was like one or two a day. And so now we're getting close to three or four a day. So I'm, I'm just really pleased that our investment is paying off. Next, we're gonna move on and start to take down some of the St. Patrick's Day decorations that we had up. So by the time I was putting these things away, Jack had woken up and was playing in his room. So it was time to get him out. And then we went to mass and had dinner. So it was a pretty busy evening. So I am, you know, continuing filming after the kids had then gone to bed. I decided to bake the pumpkin at, I believe, 300 degrees. And it was like in there for two, two and a half hours. And while that pumpkin was baking, I went ahead and made some no churn ice cream because we had some heavy whipping cream that I needed to use up. So I'm throwing in two cups of heavy whipping cream and just whipping that up until we get stiff peaks. And then in a separate bowl, we are going to take one can of sweetened condensed milk, a half a cup of cocoa powder plus two more tablespoons of cocoa powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. And we're gonna mix that up until it's you know nicely incorporated. And then we are going to fold in the whipped cream. This is actually a recipe that I tried a couple years ago on this channel, and it was just a very rich and delicious ice cream, something that you don't really need a huge amount of. When I made this the first time, I crushed up some Oreos and mixed it in. This time around, I didn't have any Oreos, and I just asked around like, you know, Juan, do you want anything mixed in, peanut butter or whatever? And he just wanted it plain. So in a couple of the ice cream cups that I make, I incorporate some peanut butter because I like that combo, but uh, the rest of them, I either just leave blank or let Aubrey put sprinkles on. So as you guys saw before I even started making this, I did put the pan I was going to put the ice cream in in the freezer just to get everything nice and cold before I transfer the ice cream. You can also use a bread pan if you would like, but I like using these little silicone cupcake liners because it makes removing the ice cream really easy and it helps with portion control.
So we're gonna let these guys freeze in the freezer for a few hours. We didn't really even touch it until the next day and they are pretty much halfway gone by now. We're gonna wrap up this video and this evening by finishing dealing with my baked pumpkin. So by now, this whole thing has collapsed, a fork can go in, so I know that it's done. And this was my first time and it just, it means so much knowing that like I grew this in my backyard and now it's going to become like pumpkin bread for us and food for our chickens. It just makes me really happy. <laughs> But I'm just using a fork here to scrape out all of the inside and then I'm actually blending it up just so that we don't have long stringy pieces because when I do bake bread with this, I'd rather not have like the long stringy pieces. I'd rather have it just fully pureed. And what I'm doing is once it's pureed, I'm measuring out four cups worth and putting that in a Ziploc bag. And you'll see that I'll get about a total of eight cups out of this half of the pumpkin. So that will serve to make about two recipes worth of my pumpkin bread. And I believe each recipe is two loaves. So anyways, it's gonna be a, you know, a good amount of pumpkin bread. I might do some pumpkin muffins, I'm really not sure yet. And I'm gonna be freezing one of these bags and then keeping the other one in the fridge to be used within the next couple of days. And then finally with the skin of the pumpkin, I'm just dicing this up in like super fine pieces to feed to the chickens. I'm gonna be going outside even though they are asleep and I'm just gonna be dumping it in their chicken run for the following morning so that they can go ahead and enjoy that as a little treat once they wake up. I'd like to thank you guys for following along on today's video. I hope that it encourages you to be productive, especially if you have like a short little window of time to get stuff done. I just really hope that it motivated you. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new and check out all of my other motherhood content and give this video a thumbs up and I will catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.